you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. We are here this morning to give him all the glory. Hallelujah. Give him all the praise. God, we get to honor you right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Worthy is his name. Let's experience God this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, worship him. Worship him this morning. Lord, you are worthy, Jesus. You are my king, Lord. It was my cross you bore, so I will live in the freedom you died for. Now my life is yours And I will sing Of your goodness forevermore Worthy is your name Jesus You deserve the praise Worthy is your name
from 1 to verse 4. Please stand in the presence of God. I begin. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the land. Fourth and last. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of God. This is the word of God. Amen. One, two, three. What makes a cat? God took the strength of a mountain, the majesty of a tree, the warmth of the summer sun, the calm of a quiet sea, the generous soul of nature, the comforting arm of night, the wisdom of the ages, the power of eagle's flight, the joy of morning and spring, the faith of a mustard seed, the patience of eternity and the depth of a family in need. Then God combined these qualities together. He combined them together. He combined them all together. As there was nothing more to add, he knew that his masterpiece was complete and so then he called it Dad. Good job. Father's Day is an opportunity for children to express their love and gratitude to their dad. To my dad, 
have I told you lately that I'm thankful for all the mornings that you woke up to go to work? No, you probably wanted to sleep in. Thank you for always putting our needs before your needs. Thank you for all the sacrifices that you have made over the years to make us better. Dad, you have been our pillar of strength, our protector. You have always been there for us, and for that, we are truly grateful. On this day, we just want to wish you a happy Father's Day. From your daughter, Carrie, and your son, Kirk, we love you. Happy Father's Day. The day we celebrate you will be our dad. I'll always be your baby no matter how far times go. Happy Father's Day, Daddy! Happy Father's Day. My father is the best father because he teaches me to be brave and to be a protector. Bye. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. We love you, appreciate you, all that you do. Um, we love the example that you set for not only your grandkids, but your sons. You're a true definition of a strong, hardworking, resilient man. We love you, appreciate you, and hope you enjoy this day. We honor you, you and recognize you on this day. Say happy Father's Day, Dad. We love you, and I love you. <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Daddy, from your favorite child. I love you very, very much, and I pray that you live a very long and healthy life. Mwah. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love you. Happy Father's Day, Daddy! Yay! Happy Daddy! Yay! Hi, Dad. Hi, Papa. Say hi, Papa. Hi, Papa. Uh, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Day. We love, love you. you. Dad, thank you for taking care of us and protecting us. Thank you for Thank you for Congress, thank you for teaching us, thank you for any for loving us. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Daddy, we love you. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I love you. And I don't know what else. Hey, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for your love, support, and guidance. Love you. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. I love you. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. We love you so much. Thank you for taking care of us. Happy Father's Day. I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I want to give a special Father's Day shout out to my dad. Um, the words thank you do not do it justice. How much work you do for our family. I want to say I love you. I appreciate you. God bless. Hi, Hi Dad. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. Thank you for being the best dad we could have ever asked for. Like, you do so much for us and we really appreciate it. Yeah, all your hard work inspires us to work really hard as well. And we're really grateful to have you as our father. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for everything that you do for our family and for always being here for us whenever we need you. We pray that you have a wonderful Father's Day and many, many, many more to come. Bye. Happy Father's Day, Dad. We love you so much. There are just not enough words to express our heartfelt gratitude for all that you've done for us. We truly love you and appreciate you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Papa. Thank you for being kind and supportive. We always have a fun time when we see you. Happy Father's Day, Papa. We love you. I hope you have a great Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Mr. Miller. I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy Father's Day to a great dad. Surely you are one of a kind. I thank God for you each and every day. You have been a blessing in all of our lives. Um, happy Father's Day from Doug Eugelaine, Jackie, Janae, Laura, Amani, DJ, Tony, Ron, Autumn, and Mom. We all love you. I'm unaware of things. 
these afflictions eclipse my glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he like a hurricane I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I'm unaware of his afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I just want to thank God for this opportunity this morning to come before you and to speak to you on this Men Sunday. And I want to thank my pastor for the opportunity to speak this morning. Amen. You know, he doesn't give up the pulpit, but we just want to thank God that he has this morning. Amen. So can you just stand with me one more time and turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. When you have found it, please stand. And we're just going to read two verses. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. And if you can stand, stand. But he are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people 
that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hallelujah. And to, we want to say to God be the glory, great things he has done, and we want to thank God for his word this morning. You may be seated in his presence. This morning, I just want to take some time to talk to the men of Metropolitan Church of God and to any man that is listening on the line this morning. And I want to talk to you about embracing your divine identity. Embracing your divine identity. A father's journey in faith at father's journey in faith this morning i want to say good morning or good afternoon and happy father's day to all the fathers grandfathers and father figures that are present in the house today and that are online today we are reminded we are reminded not just of the role and responsibility that you, you play each day. We want to thank God that he has kept you as fathers. And we thank God for those of you who represent as being good fathers. Good fathers. And today we want to, to, to remind not just you of the role and responsibilities that come with fatherhood, but of the deeper divine identity that is bestowed upon you as God's chosen vessels. You see, in a world that is often times uh, label men, there are labels that are placed upon men, and, and sometimes these labels are superficial. And, and these labels try to identify men and tell men who they are. And try to tell men what kind of men they are. And some of the labels that are placed in men today, they say that you are no good. They say that you are lazy. They say that, uh, that you are a deadbeat father. But today I want to recognize men who are honorable. Men who, who represent the divine goodness of God. Men that take their responsibility seriously. Men that perform not when others are looking on them. But men that are behind the scene that are doing the work. They may not get re um, recognized, uh, but today I want to highlight these men of God, these chosen vessels of God. Second um, Peter 2 tells of the good character that God said that men are. And I want to look at the example that Job represents in the word of God. And we see that Job was a man, that God said he was a man of faith. And today we want to thank God for every man that are present in the house today, that knows how to take care of their household. When we look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, he said that these men, they are chosen by God. God declares, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. This is not merely a title that is declared by the world, but this is a title that is declared by God. And he's talking about the intrusive value and purpose of his men. 
Being chosen by God means that you are worth, your worth is not derived from what the world has to say, but it comes from the eternal value of God. It comes from the love and the sovereignty of God himself. He is saying, fathers, you must first see yourself as beloved and chosen by God, grounded in his identity. His unwavering love for you, not the identity of this world. But you must chose to represent your godly father. He said that you are a chosen generation. As men of God, you are a chosen generation, distinguished by God. And you are set apart. You have the authority given to you to speak word of upliftment, word that will elevate, word that will expand your family. You have the authority to speak and to bind every tongue that risen up against you, that comes against you in judgment, that comes against your family. You have the power and the authority divinely given to you from God, not just to only name it and claim it, but you have the power to declare a thing over your family and it shall be so. You are a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. And you are called royalty by God. The concept of a royal priesthood Elevates your role to one of spiritual authority and intercession. In ancient Israel, priests were mediators between God and the people. As fathers, you are called to this sacred role in your family. To pray over your family. To intercede over your family. You are called to be the priest over your family. Not just the priest when you come to church. But you have to be the priest over your household. As fathers, you have to bring the family together. And you must pray over them. You must cover them. You have to be like Job. Job interceded for his family. He said, perhaps when they gather together and they are parting, they sin against God. So Job made a sacrifice before God for his family. And he interceded, he interceded before God and he asked God to cover them. As fathers, you must be that intercessor for your family and lift them up before God. Because you see, this world, they're tr this world is trying to steal your children. This world is trying to give them a different identity. But you must stand up as men. And I be that identity to them, that chosen vessel that is set apart by God himself. As men of God, you must allow your children to see that you are royalty. That you are different. That you are unique. That you are blessed men. Today, we see where men... They are losing their identity. But today I come to let you know that you are a chosen vessel by God. And God says that you are unique, that you are set apart, and that you have purpose. You have purpose. And as men of God, you must let your light shine before men so that they may see your good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. 
He said that you are a holy nation. A holy nation. In Exodus 19 and verse 6, he said, If you will indeed be my voice and keep my commandment, you shall be my treasured possession. Amount amount all the people of the hurt, for all the hurt is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. A holy nation. Being holy means to be distinct from the world. Being distinct from the world. You are dedicated to be a living vessel according to God's standards. Living in holiness. Living in righteousness, what does it mean? It means that you must have moral purity. You must have integrity. You must have ethical behavior and spiritual integrity. Men of God, you must walk according to the standard of God. He said, be holy because I am holy. As men of God, you must walk according to God's righteousness. This involves living a life that reflects God's character and his commandments. Men of God, you are men of standard. I said you are men of standard. Do not allow the world to put its identity on you. And you should not cave and bow down to the world's standard. But you must be set apart. You must walk according to God's commandment and live a godly character. Because he said that you are a chosen vessel. A vessel that is set apart by God himself. When you are a chosen vessel, you cannot allow any and everything to be poured into you. Because you are unique. You are men of valor. And you are men of value. So you've got to live according to God's standard. Ah, uh, the men are telling, the world is telling men today that you are not just men, uh, but you have, uh, um, you are a woman. You don't know who you are. You're letting the world tell you who you supposed to be. But I come this morning to declare that men, uh, God said, I made man uh, and I made Eve. Uh, and he said, I made you according to my image. If you are the image of God, then I want to let you know today that you are holy. You are righteous. You are men of integrity. You are men of value. You are men that are called according to God's word. So this morning, you need to stand up and declare that I am a chosen vessel of God. And I will live according to his principles. He said that you are a peculiar people. Peculiar. What does it mean to be peculiar? He says you are different, uncommon, unusual people. You belong to God. You are God's special people, chosen before the foundation of the world, set apart for his special purpose. Deuteronomy 14 verse 2 says, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord have chosen thee to be a peculiar 
people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Men of God, you are different. I said you are different uh, and you are called to live in a way that reflects uh, that unique relationship that you have uh, with your heavenly father. You are called to walk according to his purpose, according to his will. He says, uh, men, there has to be an inner transformation. And yes, we know men, you go through so many different things. And, 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 and the standard that is set for men sometimes, it can be so low. But I, I come today to raise the standard, uh, the standard of men, because you are unique. You are special. When we look at the story of Job, we see one who is, he suffered profound suffering. But even in his suffering, we see resilience. We see a deeper faith. Despite losing his wealth and, and his children and his health, Job's response was one of worship. And one of submission and steadfastness. Men of value. Men of value. When you go through your suffering, you don't have to go through and in despair. But you can go through still worshiping and praising your God. Sometimes men suffer and you have a bad reputation. But despite what you're going through, you can still go through with your head lifted high. Despite losing the things that you hold dear, despite losing your money and losing your children. But you don't have to lose your worship. You don't have to lose your praise. Job respond was one of worship and submission and steadfastness when he lost his children, when he lost his wealth. Ah, in spite of what his wife said to him, she said, why don't you curse God and die? But Job said, woman, you speak like a foolish woman. Men of God, I come today to declare to you that as you are going through, remember who you are. God said uh, that you are royalty, that you are a chosen generation, that you are a peculiar people, and you don't have to respond uh, to your pain, uh, to your suffering as the world does, uh, but you can respond uh, by going to your knees uh, and lifting your head to God uh, and say like Job, uh, though he slay me, oh yes God, yet will I. Praise him. Job responded to his worship, to his suffering with worship and trust in God. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It is not easy when you're going through your suffering. It is not easy, men, when the world look uh, sideways at you. Sometimes you want to give up. But I want to tell you to keep pressing forward. Keep moving forward. Because God, he has set you apart. Fathers, even though you face life challenges and hardship, be resilient as Job was. You see, being resilient teaches us uh, that in the face of adversity, we must hold on to our faith. Furthermore, it teaches us uh, that true faith uh, is not based upon our circumstances, but is deeply rooted in the character of God. 
as fathers your strength is not found in your ability to to control the circumstances that you find yourself in but it's to have unwavering trust in God's sovereignty you have to be resilient because when you go through the process, God will refine you. Men of God, today I want to lift up your hands and let you know this morning that you have value and you have purpose. Job's suffering. He was a curricle that reminds us that his faith was re refined in the fire. And it's in the fire that his deeper purpose was revealed. In Job 23 verse 10, he states, But he knows the way that I take when he has tested me. I shall come forth as pure gold. You're going through the fire. You've been through the fire. But you're coming out as pure gold. You're coming out different. The way you went through the fire, you're not coming out the same way, but you're coming out looking different. You're coming out of men, men that have strength, men that have character, men that have purpose. This morning, I want you, men of God, to lift up your head and allow the King of glory to come in. Similarly, the trials you face as fathers are opportunities for your spiritual growth and refinement. This teach you that your dependency is upon God. And it's through this that you learn humility and perseverance. Men, you've got to learn to persevere. You've got to learn to go through. You cannot be easily be broken. It doesn't matter what people may say about you. This morning, as you are sitting beside your, your, your spouses, Sitting beside your children. Men, I want you to look at them and ask them this question. Who do you say I am? Ask them the question. Who do you say I am? What do you call me behind my back? Do you call me a man of God? Do you call me as God? as one of God's peculiar people. Fathers, this morning, you must know who you are. You must know your true identity and that your identity comes from God himself. He said, I made you in my image. And God is holy. And if he made you in his image, then you too are holy. He said you are a holy nation. You are a nation that is set apart for my glory. So this morning, you've got to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are a vessel of God. And that the vessel that you have, that there is still something within you that you can pour into others. You must let your children know that as men of God, you are favored by God. That as men of God, that you are called according to his purpose, his will. And that you must submit to God. Fathers, you must allow your children to see you kneel and pray before God. They must see you worship in church. 
Many of us, we, we see oh, our children, they, be, they, they, they are doing things that are not right. They, they are acting effeminate before, before the world. What are they seeing at home? Men, you must stand up and let your kids see that you are not afraid to be masculine. You're not afraid to let the world know, know that I am a man and I am proud to be called a man. Stop walking with your heads hanging down. Stop walking with your pants hanging down. Stop leaving your house in your know, in your way you feel like, but dress. Put on your best clothes. Teach your young men how to dress. Teach them how to talk. Teach them how to behave. Teach them to know that they are kings and that they are priests. Teach them to know that they are a chosen vessel. Because if you don't give them their proper identity, the world is waiting to put their labors and this, their own identity on them. Men of God, you have to be men of standard. Today I ask the question, how will you represent God when the church is not looking? How do you represent God at home? How do you represent God on your jobs? How do you represent God when you're in your car and you think no one is looking? What kind of music are you playing? Today I ask the question, how will you respond when God removes the edge from around you and your household? Will you fall to your knees and worship? Will you fall to your knees and say, Lord, though you slay me, yet will I trust you? Can you be as brave as Job? and worship God through your worst adversary? Can you worship God when your friends come at you and, and, and they look at you and they wanna say, it's because you did this or you did that, why are you going through this? Can you still worship God? Can you worship God even though he took your child? Can you worship God even though he took your house? He took your money? Can you say just as Joshua did? Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Do we have men who will stand up and declare today that as for me and my house, we're going to worship God. This morning, I want to encourage you that in spite of what you may be going through, you've got to say this one thing I know and I know for sure. I know this for sure. That some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, and some trust in horses. But I will trust in the name of the Lord. And you run over to Proverbs, and Proverbs said in Solomon, But I will trust in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous runs into. And I'm safe 
men of valley can you trust him this morning in spite of what your body may be saying in spite of what the world may be saying you can declare this morning I will trust in the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower he has never failed me he has never failed me God has never failed me I have failed him but he has never failed can you say like Job naked I came into this world naked shall I return the Lord give it and the Lord take it away blessed be the name of the Lord it takes strength it takes strength it takes courage it takes faith in God to stand up and declare that for God I live and for God I'll die it takes strength it takes courage God is looking for a few good men this morning a few good men who have sold out sold out for the kingdom of God a few good men who are sold out for the army of God a few good men that even though they may be going through battle fatigue ah, uh, they may be having some PTSD but they still stand up and declare that the mind that I have this mind that I have the world cannot take it away from me Sometimes as men, you don't know if you're going or you're coming. Sometimes it feels as if you have even lost your mind. But this one thing I know for sure, the word of God says in Peter 2 and verse 9, he said, you are, you are, not that you will be. But he said, you are a chosen, a chosen generation, a chosen generation, a generation that is set apart, a generation that has strength, a generation that knows how to go through. A generation that knows how to be stretched and still don't break. A generation that knows, oh, that the battle may be hot. But the generation, like the three Ebus boys, they said, even though he may not deliver us, but we will not bow. We will not succumb. We will not give in. But we will serve the Lord. This morning, we rip off all the labels that are attached to you. You shall no longer be called lazy. You shall no longer be called a failure. You shall no longer be called weak. These labels we, we remove from you, these labels that distort uh, and, and, and change your self-perception and undermine your God-given identity. We remove them by the name of Jesus this morning. And we come and declare this morning that you are God's chosen people. First Peter chapter 2 verse 10 says that once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had no mercy, but now you have received mercy. We must reject the world's labels and embrace, embrace your true identity as God beloved children. Galatians 4 verse 7 said, so you are no longer a slave 
but a son. And if you are a son, then you are heir through God. You are his sons and daughters created in his image. And you must stand and declare who you are. A chosen vessel. You must manifest God's image. God's love. And God's grace. Your identity in Christ calls you to manifest. His love that he has poured into you. And you yourself must manifest this love within your family, within your communities. And as pastor spoke earlier and talk about the world, the world is talking about they're taking your children, they're coming after our children. You must be brave men and women that will stand up and declare just as Joshua did that as for me and my house, you will not come into my house and declare a thing. I have the authority to declare a thing in my house. You don't have the authority to declare anything in my house. You must stand up and take back your power. Take back your authority. Take back what God has given to you. He said to Peter, he said to his disciples, who do men say that I am? Peter stood up and declared. He said that you are the son of the living God. You must stand up in your house and declare in your house who you are. He said to, to Peter, he said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Furthermore, the word of God said that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. But the violent take it back by force. God is calling for men to stand up and take it back by force. Take it back. Take it back. We need men like Peter in the church who are not afraid to pull their sword and to cut it off. We need men who are not afraid to fight. We need some sharp shooters in the Holy Spirit. We need men who can spy something happening over yonder and take it out before it comes near your family. We need men who are not afraid to fight. We need some combat fighters in the house. Spiritual warriors. But we don't fight like the world fight. We fight on our knees. But God is calling you to stir up the gifts that's in you as men. Stir it up. So that you will have spiritual eyes to see and to detect what the enemy is doing. To have spiritual ears to hear what is happening in the spiritual realm. And to take it out before it touches your family. Because God said you are unique. And when you are unique it means you have some special skills. So you need to pull out those special skills. Sharpen them. Sharpen them. God just don't want you to come to church looking sharp. Sharp like a casket. But God wants you to be sharp in the spirit. This means embodying the fruits of the spirit. Love. Joy. Peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are all the characteristics of God. You must reflect these things, men. But just because you are kind and good, every now and again we need to see that rough side. We need men to talk like men. Men to walk like men. When you see someone of royalty walking, you, you, you can see them coming from a mile away. They look different. They dress different. They speak different. They hold themselves in a unique way. Do not bow down and give in to the world perspective of who you are or who you should be. As fathers, you are called to reflect God's character in your intercessions, offering forgiveness, patience, and unconditional love. Love to your children. Love to your spouse. Many of us, we are Jamaican or Caribbean people, and we know how to dress down our kids, to discipline them. And sometimes we, we discipline them out of anger. But God said we must do it in love. You should be that sanctuary for your family. Fathers, make yourself available to your children so that your children can come and talk to you. Have a conversation with your children. Grandfathers, be to your grandchildren what you did not, or you, you, you couldn't be to your own kids. You have a second opportunity to get it right. Pour into them. Be good examples to them. Let them see you have, as men of worship. Men that knows how to worship God. Men that knows how to honor God. Your house should be a sanctuary of God's presence. Where his love and his peace reign. Men of God, you need to build a legacy. A legacy for your family. A legacy of faith. True identi identity you must embrace and live a life that is pleasing to God. An eternal life that is not one that's going to last tomorrow, but one that lasts for eternity. Your identity is important. Men, your identity is important. I'm looking right here and I see three generation. Three generation. This morning, as I was praying and I heard you said, Sister Nicole is in the house and I was thinking of Brother Rodney and, and Nicole this morning. And I, I remember when Nicole was getting ready to marry Nicole, if you're, if you, just wave your hands wherever you are. And, and I remember Nicole and Rodney would come to the house and my mom would pour into them. She would pour into them the knowledge that she has about being a wife. And I, I want to tell you, my mom, she, she loved Rodney. She loved that young man. And Nicole, she embraced them. Men of God, you must pour Pour into the next generation. Teach them. Teach them how to be faithful husbands. Teach them how to be faithful fathers. Teach them how to be true worshipers. Teach them. You, we, we come into church. I'm getting ready to close. We come into church and, and, and we talk that our children are not worshiping. 
but do they see you worship in church? They cannot, they can, cannot reflect what they don't see. Last week I was truly blessed. Truly blessed as we were praying for pastor. I felt a little hand and when I opened my eyes, I, I saw little Genesee was there praying for his pastor. We want to see little boys and little, little girls who are brave. They will run to the altar and lay hands. That's what we are praying for. Jesus told his disciples, he said, Matthew 16, verse 9, he said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Fathers, you have that authority this morning. Whatever you see that is happening over your family, you have the authority to take it under control and bind it. You have the authority to speak life and blessing Hallelujah. and truth into your families Hallelujah. by standing firm in your identity. You can break generational Whoa. curse Hallelujah. by negative influences and release God's favor and blessing upon your household. This morning, I want to let you know in closing, your identity as fathers goes beyond society labels and superficial standards. You are chosen. Royalty. Holy. Peculiar. Set apart by God for his divine purpose. Through the example of Job and the teachings of 1 Peter chapter 2, we learn to anchor our identity in God's eternal truth. Allowing his love and grace to transform us from within. This morning, as the musician play. Fathers, I want to encourage you this morning to take back your identity, to stand and declare to the world, but most importantly, to your family, who you are, who you are.